Let's get us a hymn book and turn to number 195. Number 195. Uh, down at the cross where my Savior died.
our feet. Welcome to our midweek service. Our choir is going to come down and join you. Teenagers will come up and they'll take over the teen choir. Greet someone. Tell them you're glad they're here at Freedom Baptist Church. and take our seats. You can see the teen choir behind us. They're going to sing in just a minute. And uh, they're actually, they're going to sing three. Uh, we are on, a, 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 I don't know, I wouldn't call it JV. These kids will sing great for you, trust me. But to put a special together, we've got so many different folks gone that we can't use this quartet because these two guys are gone. We can't use this chorale because these five people are gone. And can we do that? And it just couldn't mix. So we're just going to sing three teen choir songs for you. And I think they'll be a blessing for you. So you all pray for them. They'll sing their hearts out. We'll sing two now. Then I'll come back and make the announcements. Um, and then I also, because they're staying up there, if you could help me with this, I'll need probably four men. Normally our teen boys do the offering. But when it does come time for the offering later in the service, if I can get four men to help us with that sure would be a blessing let's uh sit back relax I almost sound like we're putting a show on but uh we are for the lord amen so y'all just enjoy the teenagers they sing these two for you at this time
My life was fine without you I was covering up the secret tears I cried Then one day someone told me of your mercy And the love you showed on Calvary And there you died to purchase my redemption is stronger than my weakness and your ear is open every time I pray no one else has ever cared for me like you Lord other friends can never been as close to me I'm not afraid to face the problems of tomorrow announcements and uh, let's see first of all don't forget about our Saturday morning visitation at 10 o'clock a.m. and again this will be the last time but college student information please fill out the information sheet in the vestibule and uh, we'll pick it up after today we've asked you several times so thank you for that then the return America rally which will be in Raleigh try saying that five times fast return America rally in Raleigh and uh, that'll be Tuesday September 30th there are sign up sheets in the vestibule area if you're planning to go please let us know uh, we don't mind taking several folks we just want to make sure we're prepared we don't want to line up a van if we need a bus we don't want to just line up one bus if we need two so help us with that if you think you might be going and uh, then the father-son camp out is Friday and Saturday, but it's October the 3rd. And again, if you can sign up for that, if you're planning to attend. And then, of course, wood splitting up at Second Chance Ranch up at the Kings. That'll be Saturday, October 11th. And then, of course, that same Saturday, the Craftsman for Christ is doing a dedication service for Glory Land Baptist Church. That is also on Saturday, October 11th. They'll leave the church at 930, services at 2. So if you could help with signing up for that also. That way, Brother Venable knows what type of vehicle to take with that. All right, if we can get four fellas to help us with the offering, we'll get ready to take that. And uh, good, good. Thank you, gentlemen. And then uh, with that, I will tell you the Richardsons, Miss Amy's recovering. She had surgery this morning, and Brother Todd texted me and told me uh, doctors believe everything went well and got everything taken care of, so she'll be recovering and a little bit of pain. 
And uh, so just pray as she recovers with that, if you could. And continue to pray for our preacher while he's on vacation and enjoying his time. We sure do miss him around here, but I do. I am grateful that he took time to get away. I'm also wondering, it took four years for him to trust his associate pastor enough that he could leave. So it's kind of a catch-22, I think. No, but we are delighted he's gone. You pray for him to be able to be refreshed and revived when he gets back and ready to go. Brother Beeson, if you could pray for us, pray for the offering, and then when, uh, once they're done with that, we'll move on with our service. Lord, we thank you for another time to be your house tonight, Lord. We thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you for loving you tonight, Lord. We pray that you just be in the service tonight and have your will and way. God, we just thank you for all you've done. And just thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins, Lord, and he rose again that might have life through him, Lord. And Lord, I pray for some lost soul here tonight, and I pray to get saved for it's totally too late. And Lord, I pray that you bless us all from blessed to give from the giver. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Come join you now. Is that okay? 
And uh, it may seem awkward, we're not used to it, but that's okay. Take your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter number 4, and as they come join us, we'll get ready for a good service, and uh, they're going to be singing next Monday night also, and teenagers, please, 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 if you've forgotten through camp meeting stuff, make sure you're signed up on the sheet in the vestibule, and uh, that way I can let them know how many of us are coming, and again, we thank you so much for volunteers to drive and help. And I know Monday night's a tough night with some kids having ball practice or extracurricular activities of some sort. I understand that. But if we can meet here by 6, be on the road by 6.15, we'll sing on the bus to practice if we have to. I just want to make sure to be a blessing to this church over in Madison. Um, Again, I know of a few families that are just going to meet us there. It's a little easier for them that way, and that's fine. But uh, let's try to be a blessing. So even if you're driving over there, at least sign your name on there, teenager, so we know what size crowd we got that'll be singing for us. It's, uh, if you're visiting with us, I was scanning the crowd, and, but if you are visiting, please come back and meet our preacher and uh, Pastor White and uh, his wife, Miss Jennifer, and, and uh, hear, them pre- hear him preach, please. And uh, don't just think of uh, tonight as a taste of Freedom Baptist Church. Come back. I do love our church, and uh, you're a wonderful group of people. You're awesome people, is what we would say in California. You're gnarly, dude. All right, um, and it just that's you. It's an endearing word, trust me. But uh, and and I don't know. I, I I tried to think. I was gonna say this is the my favorite service of the week. I enjoy all of them. That's like asking which one of my three kids I love the most. There's some I enjoy spending more time with than others, uh, but I love them all equally. And uh, same thing with church service. There's something about Sunday morning, and there, there, there's a vibe Sunday morning like no other. But then Sunday night feels a little more homely. It's just not just up, but you know it feels. But then Wednesday, knowing that we're teaching and training our young kids with our Freedom Youth Club, and then of course the teen choir, and here it's the strengthening of our people. And I just like them all. So thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to try to be a help to you and a blessing. And uh, here we are in Philippians. Are you there in Philippians chapter number four? All right, we're going to try to get right into this. We're going to look at several things here. The Bible says in the book of Philippians is a wonderful book. It's 104 verses. And in these 104 verses, about 16 times, you'll see the noun joy used, whether it's joy or rejoice or rejoicing, 16 times in these four chapters of this small book. You want me to turn my lapel on? Okay, Brother Marks, you're waving at me. Is that better? All right, I'm sorry. Okay, and in these uh, 104 verses, 16 times, and then 50 times the name Christ is mentioned. I think that's just a neat reminder that really if you want to achieve that joy in Christ, it's got to be in Christ. And so the joy is there 16 times, but Christ is there 50 times to say, say to us we cannot enjoy joy without Christ. Now, we're going to speak on this subject tonight that let's remember joy and happiness are two different things, right? Happiness is based on external things. Joy is based on what happens inside, all right? Happiness is based on our happenings, okay? And we can be happy for those things around us, but joy comes from Christ and a source from within and it works its way out. Happiness happiness tries to work its way in and we try to make it last as long as possible. Here we are in Philippians chapter 4 verse number 4 where the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. So not only does it tell us what to do, it tells us how often we should do it. Always. We should always rejoice. And uh, with this word joy, there's so many times mentioned, not just in Philippians, but everlasting joy is mentioned in Isaiah chapter 35. Joy unspeakable is mentioned in 1 Peter 1. Uh, Again, exceeding joy in 1 Peter chapter 4 and Jude 24. And then the joy of the Lord in Matthew 25. But here we're told to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And I just want to speak to you on this topic and if you'll let me, as uh, I rem- reminisce about, as we get ready to speak on this topic, my wife is with the seniors from my son's senior class there at school, and they've been out in New York most of the week. We used to do that for the church we worked at in California. We were, as youth pastors there, we would take the seniors on their senior trip. 
Brother Jimmy, and being in the Northern California area, we'd go down to Southern California. It was just a fun trip, basically. Uh, went to all the amusement parks, visited churches, tried to help out in them, and went skiing maybe a day. But again, Disneyland and Universal and uh, Magic Mountain, and just a fun time for the seniors, kind of a culmination of a great year. And did fundraisers for all that. Oh, Brother Sherman, it's going to get better. Trust me, it's not that bad. And uh, man, I'm telling you, whoo! And uh, I'm teasing. And, uh, and so we'd be in Southern California, and then this one time we had this idea. The kids just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough group to, to please. you got a bunch of girls that just want to go shopping, a bunch of boys that just want to go do whatever. And so we did one day. We went down and went across the border. Uh, not Taco Bell, but we went down to, to Mexico into Tijuana. And California is pretty strict on all the things you can do. We can't even buy fireworks there and, uh, and shoot them off and everything. you got to go to the Arizona or maybe up north and get them and shoot the good ones off. Here you just go to that guy down the street, right, and he's got the stuff you need. And so we took the groups down, the group down there. This happened to be the year. Remember Brother Treber that preached our camp meeting last year? His son Tim happened to be a senior that year, and so we had him. And now you know, boy, i got to be careful what we do, Brother Jimmy, because everything is going to get back to preacher and all that. And no, we were careful anyway. So we go down there, and we're on Revolution Street. Tabitha, at this point, had just been born. If she was a month old, she was all of that. But uh, she was probably just a month old, just a few weeks, and obviously. And so uh, Debbie had her with us on this particular senior trip. So we went down, and we kind of had this van, but, but, but what we did was we, we, instead of crossing the border parking and then coming back we we found this area in the san diego area where we could stop and ride a shuttle and so uh didn't have to work so we did that i paid the one or two bucks it was per person so our group got on the shuttle we crossed over into mexico and we were going to go to revolution street revolution street is the uh the the swap meet the the yard sale whatever it is that's the place to go just to get your souvenirs so we went down there and our guys are buying ninja stars. A lot of the things you, go, you boys would be staring at, too. They're looking at these big old Rambo-type knives and all that stuff, bringing them back. They found blow dart guns, and uh, they're like, man, they're, they're practicing. They got all these uh, melons and different fruits over there. You can just, just shoot them right off, and they're practicing. So, so, man, they wound up purchasing all this stuff. My wife had taken Tabitha out of the stroller once we got into Mexico and just held her for the next 90 minutes to about two hours, I think we may have been at the most. So she held her the whole time, and... Then we got back in, and we, we purchased all of our stuff, and now we're getting ready to come back into California. Well, you know, going into Mexico was no problem. Hey, man, just it's flowing, it's going, but coming back in, they're stopping everybody. And, uh, you know, you can only bring certain things in here. I'm just thinking about the multitude of weapons my teenage boys just purchased in Mexico that we're trying to bring across the border now, right? Ninja stars, knives, blow dart guns, all this. You guys are laughing. <laughs> no ammo. And uh, No, we didn't. But, but, but we're trying to come back in. I see this long line. Then I see huge lines of people going through metal. I'm thinking, what are we going to do? Well, Brother Tim and DJ and all these boys, they're putting all of their weapons and everything in Tabitha's stroller now. They're just like, here, 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 you, know, you just put it right there. Just, it's not ours. Yeah, you're the chaperones. Yeah, I'm like, you guys, good. Brother Darrell, right, the, the, the bus mark, the, the tire marks were on my back. They, yeah, we love you, Brother Clint. Sure you do. And so, uh, man, we're thinking, and, 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 and so we're off, and I'm pushing the stroller. My wife's still carrying Tabitha, and I'm scared to death. I, I'm, I can see it now. You know, youth pastor jailed for bringing contraband across the border or something, you know, and so as we get close, I'm, I'm seeing all these people in line. Debbie's freaking out. I'm freaking out, but trying to hold it. Hey, it's okay. We, we got something. And finally, I see a room over here, big piece of glass, and a group of people in there. And I asked one of the Border Patrol, I said, what is that? They said, oh, that's where all the tour buses and shuttle bus people go. I said, so if you were a shuttle bus, you don't have to go through here. You can go through. He says, oh, yeah. I said, oh, good. Everybody, go this way. And so we got out of line as we are getting closer and closer. And we went into this room. And they just said, what shuttle bus are you with? We were like, you know, trans, whatever. Okay, good. And so we all started to walk in. All of a sudden, we're all ready to go. Praise the Lord. We're trying to fold the, the stroller back up, put it in the shuttle. And I'm like, all right, is everybody here? When taking a head count, I said, good. Everyone's, I lost my wife. I got all the teenagers on the bus, and I can't find my wife. I said, uh, one second, we go back to the show. I look back, and my wife is in a, an, in a room now with some glass in it, and there's a Border Patrol lady just reading her the riot act. And uh, I 
kind of just wanted to wait and see how this matriculated for a little bit, but I did work my way over there, and I walked in. All of a sudden, she's like, sir, can I, I need just to chat. I said, I'm her husband. Is everything okay? And I look at my wife, and, man, tears are just streaming down her face. And um, this Border Patrol worker was doing their job. That's, I'll just leave it. And they were. They weren't. There was no excessive force. No, no. We just were ignorant about the whole thing, Brother Jimmy. The lady had stopped my wife and said, can I see the papers for your baby? <laughs> Mamas, you know, the birth certificate hadn't even shown up in the mail. I mean, I don't even have the footprint thingy we did in the hospital. I have nothing on her. And so this, this Border Patrol worker was doing their job. And again, I'm ignorant. I didn't know people go down there and purchase babies and bring them across the border. I really, I was just... And this lady was questioning, whose baby is that? What's her name? Tabitha Joy Frederick. Where did you have her? I had her on this date at this time. I mean, it was, it was there. And the lady goes, what do you expect me to believe that? And just letting my wife have it. And then finally, after about 15 minutes in that room and seeing Debbie's response and everything, that, that worker just kind of walked around and said, listen, ma'am, I do believe you. But you got to understand the type of folks we got coming through here all the time. My wife was just like... I'm sorry. And I was like that, too. I'm sorry, too. And, uh, and so I said, now, just, just go ahead and get out of here. Man, we got out of there, Brother Jeff, and got in that shuttle bus and went to where our van was, and now we just started heading back. Uh, on, on I-5, just driving north, and now my wife is explaining that story to all the seniors on the bus, and I'm hearing it now, right, firsthand. From, and then the officer did this, and then I'm just, man, we're all engrossed, just listening to the story. And as we're driving and listening, driving and listening, the van I'm driving starts to do this. I took my foot off the gas and I gave it a little more gas and we're okay. It's just jumping a little bit. Man, we're rolling along at a comfortable speed on I-5 there. And one of the girls back there goes, did we run out of gas? And I'm like, <laughs> did we run? <laughs> no. I look down at that meter. If this is E, I think the thing was down here. I mean, we, yes, we were out of gas, but as any good husband, like, Brother Jeff, don't look. Don't give me that look. I said I ran. Brother Jeff went like this. Oh, come on. There's still hope for me, all right? And, uh, and, uh, but I ain't going to admit it. And uh, I let them girls have that over me, Brother Vanderford. So I was like, oh, my. And I, all of a sudden, God just put it there. Camp Pendleton, exit here. And I was like, hey, guys, y'all ever here? And I, 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 we're coasting now. I've flipped it in neutral, and we're going from 70 to 65 and 65 to 60. And, and wouldn't you know it, the Camp Pendleton exit going north on I-5 is one of these uphill ones that goes like that. <laughs> we got to 50, 40, 30, 20. And all of a sudden, we got to the top of the ridge, and it turned, and I was able just to pull off. And then Jackie Schmitz on this year. We did run out of gas, didn't we, Mr. Fredericks? Ah, what kind of driver are you? I didn't say shut up, but man, I was thinking it, you know, and I just wanted to. And so we're, we're, I had totally forgotten to even look at the guy. I was so engrossed in hearing my wife tell the story. I mean, I knew I needed gas when we went down there, but when the story started, I was like, yeah, honey, then what happened there? I, don't know, I just totally lost it. We ran out of, I, there's no way I could cover it. I tried to. No, no, we're not. But, but it was so obvious. You could tell we were out of gas. Well, the girls were very good at this. They started complaining. Oh, great. So how long are we going to be? When are we going to do? I do. And then a, a Jeep pulls up with some uh, Marines on it. Is everything okay? All of a sudden, the girls were like, oh, oh, oh who's that? Yeah, hey, hey. And boy, they're, now they're not complaining. They're okay with this. And I said, sir, I ran out of gas. He says, well, on base, we got if I could take. So I got to ride in that Jeep in the back, and they took me to their on, uh, on-site gas station. And I bought the thing, got it, and put about a gallon in there, got to a gas station, got taken care of. Man, do you know how embarrassing it is to run out of gasoline in your vehicle? It's just one of those things you go, I can't believe that. I feel like such an idiot. I feel like that most of the time anyway, but even more so when I run out of gasoline in my car. You, and then you're thinking, you, man, I passed a gas station at that place. I could have stopped there. I could have stopped. But you just, oh, it's so obvious. Can I tell you that I believe in all of us who are born-again believers that there's not a fuel meter for our life at all? 
But I believe there is a joy meter. And that source of joy that starts within is a meter that can help us to be on full. Remember being in college and you just filled your gas tank up a few dollars at a time? Some of us in here are going, college? What do you mean college? Uh, uh, but, but man, you, you, you give them a few bills and you, you pulled all the coins out of the ashtray and you gave it to them. And, and then it got to the point to where you knew, I know it's on E, but trust me, I can go about 15 more miles. We're fine. Don't worry about it. I know when the light comes on, I've got about 12 more miles before we're in tr- We're okay. Don't worry. How much easier is it to drive around when that gauge is all the way on F? There's not a care in the world. You're just driving. Can I tell you again, bringing this back to our spiritual lives, when the joy meter is on full, there's not a care in the world. It's zippity doo da zippity a my oh my, what a wonderful day. It's when that joy meter starts to get around here and then here. I'm afraid in several Christians' lives, it's on that line. And we spend our whole life justifying our lives. Oh, no, no, yeah, it's okay. It's going to be fine. I'm I'm okay. I'm good. I've got this under control. It's going to be, look, I know it may look, I know I I wasn't here last Sunday. Don't don't get down my neck. It's okay. I'm fine. All right. (laughs) It's all under control. Mr. Fredericks, are we in a gift? (laughs) It's obvious. It's obvious. Because what you do speaks so loud we can't hear what you say. And the Bible specifically shows us, it doesn't just teach us in Philippians where it was written 104 verses over four chapters, 16 times the renown joy is used, related 50 times in the name of Christ. It's not just mentioned there, but can I remind you where Philippians was written? In a jail cell. And I'm not talking a jail cell that has cable TV and three squares and a workout center and all this and yoga on Tuesday and Pilates. on. I'm talking about... The cave, the rats, the loneliness, the darkness is where this book of joy was written. Because it wasn't based on his happenings, it was based on Christ. And so if you study your Bible and see these verses jump out at you, it's amazing where you'll see where God talks about your joy being so let's turn those real quickly. First John chapter number one. We're going to use our Bible. So the first John, um, first, second, third John, Jude and Revelation. If it's easier, go to Revelation and work your way back. That'd be fine. But first John chapter number one, verse number four. I want you to see here where God mentions and admonishes us to keep our joy meter full. How can we keep our joy meter full? Well, we keep the fuel meter full by keep putting gasoline in. We keep the joy meter full in our Christian lives by doing what the Bible says. 1 John chapter number 1, verse number 4. The Bible says this, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. These pastors, John and Paul and Peter and James, who were used to to start these churches, would then turn and write letters to the churches, which in turn were used as scripture, as the word of God later. But they were written to them that their joy might be full. The, the joy of getting a letter from a distant com- a place. I mean, uh, how do we keep the joy meter full? Number one, by reading the word of God. These things have I written unto you. These were written to us, not just to have stories to tell in junior church and children church, not just to use as a springboard to preach messages from, and not just to give the gospel out, which is the greatest news in all the world. These things have I written unto you that your joy may be full. I remember while we were courting Mrs. Fredericks and I in college, 
He, many of us would come back after work and walk down this hallway towards the dormitories and there would be a landing with about three steps and then another part of the hallway and about five steps to our dorm. Well, where the first landing was was an area where all the girls that were dating boys would leave notes for them and their little nicknames on the front of them. Some of them had a smell to them with perfume. And man, I tell you, when we started courting and I, I got my first letter from her, man, I saw my name there. I pulled it off. I looked around to make sure. I ran all the way up to my dormitory room. I ran all the way up. I closed the door. I smelled it. Ah, it smells just like that perfume she wears. I opened it up. I'd read it. Oh, man. I'd read that letter. A little thumper was going on right there, man. It was just... I'd put that note back in out of shoebox above my little dresser area, and I'd put it in the shoebox, and I'd put it up there, and I'd go to my, my bunk bed, and I'd lay in there, oh, trying to go to bed, tossing. Oh. I'd get back up, man. I'd go back to that shoebox, pull that letter back, don't want to wake. Brother Joe Vasek, he was my roommate, not only just one day, he was my roommate. He slept on the top bunk, man. That thing used to sag just like that, all six foot eight, 200 whatever of him up there, man. That, that helped me learn how to pray. Dear Lord, please help this bread bed not to break. And uh, boy, I'd get under there, I'd turn my little light on in my room, and I'd read that letter again. And boy, I'd, read, I'd put it back in there. I'd try to, I couldn't sleep. Man, I just I almost wanted to get it again and read it again. That love letter. Can I, can I remind you, church? I, I'd encourage you at Genesis chapter 1 all the way to Revelation. I would put it in front of Genesis, Dear Clint, and I have it right here. And after Revelation, I have Love God. Just to remind me of this love letter that was written to me. To give me the gospel to help me to grow in my Christian walk, to encourage me in the days in which I would need it. And I tell you, I don't wake up and have to have devotions. And you saints who've been saved much longer than I know what I'm talking about. Man, I enjoy looking to the scriptures to see what God would have for me. I enjoy to look at to see what God would reprove me of. I look forward to it to see what God would teach me of. I don't know about you, but, but I need my Bible. And uh, man, I tell you what, I, I, I've been gifted several Bibles. I have several in my office, several on my bookshelf, but, but I don't know, it's like an old baseball glove. You, there's, you can have a lot of, but this is my Bible. I've, I've marked in this Bible, and, and I remember writing notes in this margin that takes me back to that spot, not just for the service, not just for the message I heard, but it takes me back to that emotion I was having when the Holy Ghost was working on me and convicting me of a particular sin in my life or encouraging me about a victory I had in my life. And I see all that. And man, I love looking at the scriptures. Hey, these things have I written unto you that your joy may be full. I, I'm not harping on this at all. I understand we all are busy and have stuff, but... Some people have their church Bible. Some people have their study Bible. Some people have their this Bible and that Bible. But and I guess it's better than no Bible. But read the Bible. Amen. Study the Bible. Listen to the Bible. These things have I written unto you that your joy may be full. We could go on and on about the wonderful stories in Scripture that are used to help us. Let's go turn over. We're in 1 John. Go to 2 John, chapter number 1. 2 John, chapter... We're talking about keeping that joy meter full. Number one, reading the Word of God. Number two, 2 John, chapter number 1, verse number 12. The Bible says, Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. Can I tell you how to keep the joy meter on full? Number one, read the word of God. Number two, listen to the man of God. Listen to the man of God. I believe we need counseling. I believe sometimes in some of the things you need godly advice and meetings for that. But I also was a young Christian, and I heard a preacher make this statement, and so I tried to do my part in it. As the preacher said, and I don't know if it's true, it might, should be, right? A preacher said it. 
He said 75% of our counseling meetings would be taken care of if my people would just listen to my messages. 75% of all counseling meetings can be taken care of from the pulpit. And then as the Lord allowed me to be in ministry some, I would start to have meetings with parents of teenagers or individuals and different folks I'd meet with. And I'm astonished to think that I'm meeting with someone who was sitting in a service that I just preached about this whole thing they're coming to me about. Brother Clint, I was just wondering. Now, you know what I want to do? My flesh, Brother Graham, wants to go, um, duh, weren't you even listening two Wednesdays ago when I was just preaching on that? That's what I want to say. But the Holy Spirit guides me and helps me and says, just re-preach it. And I go, you know, that's a great question. You know, turn, let, let me show you this scripture verse here. And that's where I believe the Holy Spirit gives utterance. And, I, and then they leave my office going, wow, I've never heard anything like that. And I'm thinking, you're right. I said it two weeks ago when you weren't listening. You know, we could be sitting, that, that's why it's important that, that, that we try our best to pay attention in church. That's why Brother White tries to free any distractions that there might be. That, that's why, you know, really, I mean, I'll make mention of it. Today seems to be a good day, but, but something's out of our control that all of a sudden it's a hot day outside and we've already got all the air conditioners on a timer and they're set to this, and all of a sudden it's hot and so we can't catch up. We got the fans going, we got everything going, and man, it's just, but it comes in and you know what? People aren't going to get anything out of the message because one thing's on their mind. I can't believe how hot it is in here. And then flip it, right? All of a sudden, we have this weird weather come in, and everyone comes in here, and all like, boy, you can hang meat in this place. Hey, let me tell you, you can hang meat, and I've got to tell everybody that we can hang meat in this place, and we miss out on listening to the message that our pastor had for us. And then we go to Coronet. Hey, how was your service? Oh, man, let me tell you how cold it was in there. You missed an opportunity to fill the tank up. That's why ushers, we try to find seats for people where they could clearly see and hear. That's why your pastor has bought and made available for many of you the headphone systems. Not so we can, ha, 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 that is furthest thing from the decision-making process. It's that they could hear the message going on. Why? Because Preacher White wants to have his church members' joy meter on full. Some of the best advice I got in my marriage, some of the best advice I got in my child rearing uh, as, as, as a parent, some of the best advice I got in my inner relationship skills, if you want to call it that, have been from writing down and paying close attention to every time I hear someone behind a pulpit say, take your Bible and turn to. Can I tell you, there's such freedom living by scripture principles because the principles make the decisions for you, not you. And to listen to the man of God. I know this sounds crazy. You can think what you want. That's fine. We used to go to church and we'd set our kids next to us. And we told them ahead of time, listen, y'all go to the bathroom now. I'm afraid that we would sit there and you may have to squeeze out of the pew. And there might be someone in the pew down here who's lost and trying to pay close attention. And then all of a sudden you may slip out and go to the bathroom and just totally get them off track. We didn't, and again, I'm not, you, you parent your kids. We didn't bring coloring books. I didn't bring coloring books, so my kids were over here in church. Look. Uh-oh, I dropped it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I dropped it. I was just coloring. I'd hate to be that family and this person sitting over here. Excuse me, excuse me. 
ain't going back to that place. Man, it's, what, what do they got going on over there? Yeah, well, for, Brother Clay, if they don't want to come and be a part of that vine, they can leave. Oh, that's the love of God really working, isn't it? It's hard enough to keep up with the air conditioning and the, <laughs> and the heaters. Let's try to control the things we can't control so we can listen to the man of God so when the message is preached, our joy meter can be on full. Reading the word of God. Listening to the man of God. And then lastly, let's finish. Let's go to the gospel of John, shall we? John chapter number 16. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John 16, verse number 24. In John 16, 24, the Bible says, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Now, I think this can go hand in hand with what we heard at camp meeting last week, but can I remind you that praying to God helps to keep the joy meter full. So we've said three things. How do we keep the joy meter full? Number one, we, uh, we said reading the word of God. We said number two, listening to the man of God. And then thirdly is this, praying to God. Because every time you pray, listen, you get an answer. Listen, every time you pray, you get an answer. Yes. And what did we hear last week? No. But don't forget about the third one. Wait. 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 Now, the best thing about this is I get a lot more yeses and waits than I do no's if I were to overlook my whole life of prayer and requests and trying to ask. But can I tell you, sometimes we ask amiss. We do ask wrongfully. Uh, you know, when I was asking uh, that, that I needed a Lexus SC420 uh, convertible hard top to drive around, I was asking amiss. That was a definite no. I'm aware of that. That was when I was in California, not here. Please, I... I I love four Taurus, amen. And uh, and and so 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 I was. There are some things we ask we're just way off on, but don't forget, wait is also an answer. And the joy of knowing that I have someone I can go to, and it's my heavenly, as Brother Joe mentioned last week, Father, that we can talk to and explain things to. And uh, you know, I tell you what, Mrs. Frederick's been gone. The Frederick's home isn't a mess. Why? Because they got two girls home now. If it was me and Tim, it might be a different story. But they're doing such a good job. And but I've enjoyed. Today I wanted to listen to the radio, and all of a sudden, Dad, let me tell you, uh, Dad, how long? Okay, you know, I just finally turned it out. Go ahead and talk away. I loved hearing them talk to me. I wonder how much more does our Heavenly Father love to hear us talk to Him? And can I tell you, when my kids, were, my girls were talking to me this week as we're going back and forth, taxi drive. Let me just say this. You mamas who taxi drive, you work, you make dinner, you do laundry, all that stuff. Amen, man. God bless you all. You all get an extra crown in heaven for that, okay? And I appreciate my wife a whole lot more, too. And, uh, but let me just say this. Boy, talking to them has been awesome. I've never seen my girls talk to me without a smile on their face. Hey, Christian, you're talking to your heavenly father. (laughs) It just comes out. Mr. Fredericks, did we run out of gas? (laughs) It's easy to see. Where's your joy meter at tonight? Can I tell you, if you want it to be full, you can. You can. Yeah, well, you know, if I, I'm just waiting on the mail. for No, no, that's your happiness. Well, you know, my boss next week, he's supposed to talk about us, seeing who's getting the promote. No, 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 listen, that's not your joy. Your joy is reading the word of God. Your joy is listening to the man of God. Your joy is praying to God that your joy may be full. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word and how it plainly teaches, trains, and instructs us. And God, my prayer tonight is that we as Christians would try to get our joy meter on full. 
It's our choice. Oh, we can get caught up with some of the things around us. Yeah, I was going to come to, but you, and boy, all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's not until it's too late we realize there's no fuel in the tank. Proverbs teaches us this principle. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. God, when those adverse times come in our life, we don't know when they're coming. If our tank is on empty, it's going to be very difficult to overcome those adverse times. May we have our joy meter full. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Let's stand to our feet. Uh, invitations on, the altar's open. If there's maybe an error in your life, you see me, it sounds simple. You, you want us to give you 10 steps to this and five reasons for that, but you know what? It's read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Forget your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, 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 spiritually speaking. And if there's one here tonight, maybe you have no idea what we're talking about because you don't have the Lord. When we die, you go to one of two places, a place called heaven or a place called hell. And if you don't know that, let us take the Bible and show you what the Bible teaches on where you could spend eternity. Heads bowed, eyes closed, Christians parent praying. Keep the joy meter full. Mm. Come, go ahead. Reading the Word of God. Listening to the man of God. Praying to God. Father in heaven, you're so good to us. You let us live in America. You've allowed this group that lives in this part of North Carolina to be able to utilize the Freedom Baptist Church. And as a group of people, they've reached thousands with the gospel, both here and abroad. As I was working on some things for our upcoming missions conference in just a few months, we've taken, we, Freedom Baptist Church, has taken the gospel around the world. Now, God, may we not send the gospel out and not have its members have full tanks of joy. May we do this, is my prayer, by reading, by listening, by praying. I ask all these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening so well. You may be seated. I'll quickly look through these prayer requests.